Hey guys, going on? Megan here. Seven reasons the coronavirus will actually increase your muscle gains. Not directly, of course, but bodybuilder of the day is Tom Platts, the GOAT, the legend, the one who revolutionized what a Mr. Olympia caliber leg development should look like. Let's get straight to it, man. I feel bad for my man Goku. Straight to it. Resetting your mTOR, that's the number one reason, the number one benefit of everyone being home and not being able to, you know, obviously go to the gym. If you haven't reset your mTOR in a long time, now's a great chance to do it. And you guys, you know I was going to mention it. If you've been watching my videos for a long time, you already know what mTOR reset is. Long story short, mTOR is the main enzyme involved in protein synthesis, you know, building muscle. You have two phases of protein synthesis. You have DNA transcription. That's when you actually go to the DNA and, you know, get the genetic material, copy it. And you have DNA or in our case, RNA translation, that's mTOR. That's when you actually convert the genetic code into actual muscle tissue. mTOR is the main enzyme responsible for that. I'm not going to go into the details, you know, the rival something all that, but pretty much mTOR is responsible for protein synthesis. The problem, though, is that if you've been training for too long, mTOR becomes less and less sensitive. That's your body's way of stopping you from getting too swole. Like I said, I know that's crazy because that's all we want is to get bigger and bigger, but your body hates that shit. So usually around four to six weeks after training, mTOR starts to desensitize, right? And the only way to reset that switch, as you guessed it, is to stop stimulating mTOR, is to stop training, take a break from the gym. Again, watch my several videos on the topic if you want me if you want more detail. But another thing that down regulates uh, you know, the longer you train is your androgen receptors, right? That's another thing that your body does to stop you from getting too big. How do you reset those? Again, you guessed it, take a break. That's why in nucleus overload, I recommend you guys to train for four to six weeks, take a one or two week break, and then go back to the gym. So this is going to give you an opportunity to reset your mTOR if, again, if you haven't done that in a long time. Also, it allows your joints to recover from all the heavy lifting and all that. Now, if you already been subscribed for a long time, you've already been resetting your mTOR every four to six weeks. Um, and again, keep in mind, guys, you're not going to lose your gains. I've explained that a million times. The nuclei in your muscles does not go away, right? So all the satellite cells that donate nuclei to your muscles, they're not going to go away, right, if you reset your mTOR. You might lose a little bit of size, but the moment you go back to the gym, not only muscle memory is going to kick in, but because your mTOR is so much more sensitive now, you're actually going to grow faster than if you had not taken that break, all right? So... Don't freak out. Next, pump training. And I have a whole video on this coming up. It's going to be one of my best videos ever because, it's again, it's one of the most underrated things in the fitness community. Um, people took it way out of context and think pump training is just, you know, some fluffy doing the size. Nope. Like I told you guys years ago, it's actually more critical to your muscle growth journey than you actually thought. Right? Again, it's going to help you max maximize cell swelling right you're going to put water into the cell you're going to maximize igf1 and mechanical growth factor production you know you're going to maximize lactic acid and a lot of people underestimate the power of lactic acid when it comes to building muscle that burn is not just you know a, a byproduct of training that you can just ignore no it's actually crucial right and more and more studies are coming out ever since i made a video on high rep training and you know why the pump is important more and more studies are coming out backing it up guys bodybuilders have known this for decades Right, lactic acid helps with testosterone production. They've done studies where they've, they've they've shown that if you introduce lactic acid to the latex cells, which is obviously your you know your testicles, um, you actually get more testosterone production than if you had used luteinizing hormone, which is your body's natural way of obviously stimulating T production. You're gonna get increased IGF one, obviously, and there's a theory that you might even get more IGF one deaths because remember IGF one deaths is ten times more powerful than IGF one. Right at activating satellite cells and protein synthesis, but IGF one that's is a shorter version of IGF one, right? So you actually have to make some changes to the IGF one molecule in order to get IGF one deaths, and it tends to happen, you know, in acidic environments. So again, that's one benefit. Of lactic acid is it greatly increases, you know, the conversion of IGF one to IGF one deaths. Uh, it increases satellite cell activation, like I mentioned. It lowers myostatin. Yes, lactic acid improves your myostatin to phyllostatin ratio. And obviously, like I said earlier, it's an osmolite, right? It pulls water into the muscle cells. So pump training is so, so underrated. And, and that's the study I'm going to go into detail in one of the next videos. The muscle thickness you get after training, meaning right after you finish working out, right? That pump you get. Studies are finally showing that the correlation between that thickness... That, that, that just that crazy pump you get, you know, like the, 
the increase in muscle swelling, right, is actually more correlated with hypertrophy than the strength gains from training. Let that sink in. Because remember, I made a ton of videos about that, right? Stronger is not bigger, progressive load being a misapplied and all that shit. More and more studies are backing this up, guys. So when you finish a chest workout or a full body workout, the bigger your chest or the bigger your arm or whatever body part you're training, and I'm talking about right after that, that training session, just that temporary you know, pump effect, that cell swelling effect, is more correlated with how much muscle you're going to put on in the coming weeks than your actual strength gains over time. That is insane. The, and the correlation was tested as high, it was from, I, I believe, 44 as high as 60. So that means about 30 to 35% of the muscle gains you're going to put from your training workouts is actually more related to the pump than your actual strength gains. Again, I'm going to go into details you know, when I make that video. It's going to blow your motherfucking mind. All right. So again, so that gives you an, op an opportunity to do pump training at home. Next, calisthenics. Again, another thing that's very underrated in the fitness community. People fucking sleep on calisthenic exercises, guys. Dips for chest and tries, pull-ups for your lats, inverted rolls for your run boards and mid-traps, handstand push-ups for your delts, upper traps, upper packs. Guys, those are great ways to stimulate hypertrophy. You'd, and again, an another reason why people sleep on calisthenics is because of the bullshit you got to get stronger to get bigger nonsense that I've been bashing for the last eight years. Right, so when you tell somebody, "Hey, do dips or do pull-ups," they're like, "Oh, I'm not, I'm not gonna get too strong doing that, so I'm not gonna build muscle." Like, what the fuck, man? This is some of the best exercises you could do for hypertrophy. Now, of course, they have their limitations, but don't think that just because you're not getting, you know, a fucking hundred percent increase in your bench press by doing dips, that it's not gonna carry over. But again, like I said, watch my video on strong is not bigger, and my video on progressive overload uh, is not the drive of hypertrophy. Watch that video. I know it sounds fucking crazy, but I got all the data to finally back it up. Next, nucleus overload. This gives you an opportunity to do nucleus overload, again, at home, on your lagging body parts. One thing you can do is side laterals. First of all, in all my programs, I recommend side laterals. You should be doing side laterals every day. There's no reason why you should do side laterals on Monday and wait till the, you know, the Monday after that or the weekend to do it again. Right, your shoulders recover extremely, and I mean extremely fast. They're slow towards the dominant. There's no reason why you should let, you know, at least three days go by. That, that's why most natties have shitty side delts. It has nothing to do with the androgen receptors. It's just we don't train muscles as frequently as we're supposed to train them, especially the slow twitch muscles like shoulders and forearms and calves. Right, so it's a great opportunity for you to just do nucleus overload on your lagging body parts. You could do push-ups if you have a lagging chest. Again, pull-ups. You could do dumbbell skull crushers. You don't need a lot of weight for those. Um, so, again, take advantage of this opportunity uh, to obviously prioritize your lagging body parts. Finally, got soup. Actually, not funny. I think I have another one. Fuck it. Blood flow restriction training. Again, if you watch my videos, I've been talking about this for years, almost 10 years now, right? It is more effective than regular strength training at building muscle. I repeat, it is more effective than regular strength training at building muscle and this is proven there are so so many studies on blood flow restriction because it works so damn well it works in young people untrained trained enhanced natural you name it right not only do you get more muscle growth in some cases you get equal but you get less injuries less stress on your tendons less stress on your joints you name it much more effective and it's more time efficient it's just painful as fuck you also get more type one growth Again, more satellite cell activation, less injuries, uh, and that's the downside, though, is you do get less strength, which is another reason why I kept telling you motherfuckers that stronger does not mean bigger. You build more muscle doing, you build more muscle doing blood flow restriction training, but you always get less strength. Every single study that compared regular training, you know, a basic progressive overload and all that bullshit, you know, putting more weight on the ball, blah, 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 and fucking uh, uh, blood flow restriction training, the group that lifted heavy always put on more strength, always, 100% of the time. But the group that did blood flow restriction put on more muscle, and in many cases, equal amount of muscle, which tells you that the correlation between strength and size is horrible. And I've been beating a dead horse over that for so so many years. People didn't want to listen then, and now the studies are out, and people are still not listening, but oh well. Again, this does not mean that you should not progressive overload. Watch my video while I go into more detail. It does not mean you should not progressively overload. As I explained in that video, progressive overload is going to happen. It's a byproduct of training. Nobody benches 135 pounds for 10 reps and comes back a year later and is still doing that weight. No, you're going to automatically get stronger. You're going to go to the gym one day and you're going to realize, holy shit, I could do 12 reps now. You're going to do 12 reps. 
you're going to come back a few weeks later and realize, holy shit, now I can do 15, right? So as long as you train hard with a high enough RPE and you're always coming close to failure, you're going to progressively overload. You, you can't help it. It's part of the natural process. But anyway, another thing that's going to happen is you'll be able to train twice a day. First of all, I'm not going to talk about full body workouts. Because if you're not doing full body workouts by now, after all these years that I've been being a dead horse over it, then I can't help you. Um, again, nothing wrong with push pull, nothing wrong with splits, whatever. But if you want to maximize muscle growth, watch my videos on the topic. You should be doing full body workouts by now. But it's going to give you an opportunity this break to do it twice a day, right? As long as you do short workouts, you combine everything I mentioned high reps, blood flow restriction, all that shit, you'll be able to train twice a day. And studies on people who train twice a day, especially the ones who do katsu twice a day, show that they actually put on more muscle than if they only train once a day. Right? And it's very short. The workouts are extremely short, less than 20 minutes, so you could do it twice a day. And you got to understand, the half-life of most of the anabolic hormones is very short. IGF-1 and mechanical growth factor have a very short half-life. It's between 12 to 24 hours. The longer you've been training, obviously, the shorter the half-life. Um, I mean, the, the shorter the anabolic response. So training more often is always more optimal. Sleep. That's the last thing. Take advantage of this break. A lot of you fuckers got sent home. You don't have to work anymore, or maybe you work from home. Take advantage to sleep more. And I'm also going to make a whole video on sleep because that's another thing that's so basic, but yet so underrated in the fitness community. Sleep is king, guys. It's not a coincidence that that's when your most anabolic hormones are released. Growth hormone, testosterone, you name it. You need to sleep. It's also not a coincidence why babies, when they are growing... Right, that period of their life when they're growing the most, all they do is fucking sleep. That's not a coincidence, right? Sleep and growth go hand in hand. People in prison, one of the reasons why they're so jack, apart from steroids and then training all damn day, whatever, is all they do is fucking sleep. You gotta recover, guys. That's why in all my comments, whenever you ask me a fucking question, I'm always gonna mention the word recovery. It all depends on your recovery. So sleep, nutrition, all that stuff. So take advantage to sleep a lot more. Right, maximize your hormones, maximize your recovery. Right, and sleep is also going to help you with you know dopamine. For those of you who are not aware, dopamine is a neurotransmitter that's in, that's pretty much regulating your motivation, right? Your desire to seek pleasure, right? And your dopamine receptors are down regulating when you don't sleep enough, and it's going to lead to you having again low energy, low motivation. You're going to overeat. You're going to start taking drugs and shit, addictive behaviors. You name it. All right, so that's it, guys. Again, to perform those workouts, very simple. Just buy yourself a dip station, a uh, pull-up bar, dumbbells, blood flow restriction band. It should cost you less than $200, probably even less than that. And train at home. If you're doing HSP training, just do the P exercises only, right? Hope this video helps. Let me know what you think about Tom Plass. I still think he's one of the GOATs. He's definitely not in my top 10. I put him in the top 15 simply because his legs was really what, what stood him apart. All right, guys, do this now. Like the button, subscribe and hit the bell. Buy my ebook and training program on the website. It's the all in one hypertrophy guide, meal plan, macro guide, nutrition guide. So check out the site, grab it, use the 40% off code, Nucleus Overload.